comes, oh God, but we also, oh God, thank you for the little blessing, oh God. Oh God, for the little things, oh God, your faithfulness, oh God, your love, your care, your compassion. Oh God, we say thank you, Jesus, oh God. Oh God, as we come into this service, oh God, we ask that you, oh God, have thine own way, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, have thine own way, oh God, from the beginning to the very end, oh God. We come, oh God, to give you glory, honor, and praise, oh God. We come, oh God, to hear a word, oh God. We come, oh God, to receive of you, oh God. Oh God, we come, oh God, to give ourselves to you, oh God, to worship you, oh God, in spirit and in truth, oh God. Oh God, we come to praise you, oh God. Oh God, we praise you for your mighty acts, oh God. We praise you for your excellent greatness, oh God. We praise you, oh God, because you've been good, oh God. Oh God, you've been kind to us, oh God. For that we shout hallelujah, oh God. Oh God, for that we say thank you, Jesus. Hiya. Hallelujah, oh God. You've been a faithful God. Oh God, you've been a loving God. You've been a caring God. Oh God, for that we say thank you, oh God. Oh God, we say thank you, oh God, for the, oh God, food on our table, oh God, the clothes on our back, oh God, the shoes on our feet, God. We say thank you, oh God, for keeping our family safe, oh God. Oh God, we say thank you, oh God. Hiya, hallelujah, oh God, for food in the cupboard, oh God. Oh God, juice in the refrigerator, oh God. Oh God, we say thank you, oh God. Oh God, for our brother and our sister, oh God. Our mother, our father, oh God, our husband, oh God, our wife, oh God, our sons and our daughters, oh God. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, how ya? In the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, as we come into this service, oh God, we ask that you have thine own way, oh God. Oh God, let your Holy Spirit reign supreme, oh God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we declare that we have the victory. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, oh God. Oh God, it's at the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, that bodies will be saved, oh God. That souls will be saved, oh God. Oh God, it's at the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, that bodies will be healed, oh God. Oh God, families will be mended, oh God. Oh God, you are the repairer of the breach, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, we can declare and decree that we have the victory, oh God. Oh God, we accept you, oh God, bless us. Oh God, in a most special way, oh God. Oh God, be with us, oh God. From the beginning to the end, oh God. Oh God, from the praise team, oh God. From the opening song to the benediction, oh God. Have thine own way, oh God. Have thine own way, oh God. Have thine own way, oh God. Oh God, we'll be careful. Oh God, to give your name all the glory. We'll be careful to give your name all the honor. We can be careful to give your name all the praise. We pray these things, we ask these things, we declare these things in the name of Jesus. If you believe the report of the Lord, come on and clap your hands all over the temple. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 23. Hallelujah. Psalms 23 in your hearing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He lead me beside the still water. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Can we clap our hands all over the temple? Can we clap our hands all over the temple? Hallelujah. Our praise team is coming. Amen. Continue to clap your hands as they come. In Jesus name. Praise the Lord, everybody. 
Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Our first song is Your Great Name. Sing along with us if you know it.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The next song is, hallelujah, Jesus. The next song is Incredible God, Incredible Praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some problems, some great and some small. 
Can we just offer him some praise right here? Offer an incredible God an incredible praise. He deserves it. He deserves it. However you praise the Lord, whatever he is, the fruit of your lips, whatever comes from the abundance of your heart, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we worship you. So many other places we could be this morning, but you woke us up this morning. You started us on our way. No goodness of our own that we're here. You deserve all the praise. You deserve the glory. You deserve the honor. Hallelujah. And we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory. You deserve the honor. We lift our hands in worship. We magnify your name. Why? Because you are good. You do miracles. So good. You do miracles. So good. You are great. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Father, for pulling the scales back from our eyes. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to receive your love this morning. Hallelujah. 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 I just tell everybody in your area, he deserves the praise. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We're so grateful to God. Amen. Can we give the Lord a praise for Sister Lee and the praise team this morning leading us in worship? Amen. We thank God for them. And amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. They really are. Amen. Some unsung heroes like many of you all are. The praise team has been singing, amen, since the pandemic. Amen. I don't think if we try to have a choir, anybody would show up. <laughs> uh, but the praise team keeps showing up. Amen. They keep showing up. And let me tell y'all, let me let y'all in on a little secret. We have some good pandemic church in here. It was just about eight or ten of us in here. Amen. The singers and the apostle and mother and the, amen, the musicians. And we had some church. And we just let y'all watch. I don't know what you did in your house. Amen. But we had some good church in here. Amen. The Bible tells us where there are two or three gathered in his name. He will be a God in the midst. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. We're grateful to God to be found in the house of the Lord, and we want to move, amen, swiftly at this time into uh, the ministry of giving, which is a part of our worship, amen. Uh, the scriptures tell us to honor the Lord uh, with our increase, amen. He told Israel that all of the tithe is holy. He said all the tithe is holy, all the tithe, whether it be Amen. From your seed, from your substance, whatever it is, it is all holy. It all belongs to the Lord. And amen, we want to receive our gifts this morning. Uh, I will formally thank you later, but I, I do have to, amen, start out by saying thank you for the tremendous love that you all showed me last week for my birthday. Amen. You all make my heart glad. Amen. And it almost makes it... Uh, a little difficult to ask y'all for some more money. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but I have to. Praise the Lord. Uh, I have to. Amen. Because that's what the Lord tells us to do. Amen. We've got to. Amen. Stay in, stay in the race. Praise the Lord. Amen. And very often apostles share with, share with me. Amen. How in his heart's desire not to trouble us and to not burden us with the needs of the house and many things that he took upon himself and came out of his pocket and took away from his family and from his children to ensure that the house of God was taken care of. He said with all of that, the Lord began to deal with them because he took away the opportunity for some of us to get our blessings by doing that. Yeah. 
did that on purpose. I said, amen right there. <laughs> I'm just playing. Amen. But he told us that that was an opportunity for people that would, amen, want to and would be able to, amen, be a part of the work to sow into their own blessings and miracles. And so uh, I have taken that to heart. And as much as I don't want to be a burden to you all, I have to ask. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. And uh, as I shared with you a few weeks ago, amen, there are several things that by God's grace and by your help, we have been able to do over the last few weeks without troubling any of you. We haven't had to raise extra offerings. We haven't had to come back. Uh, but last week, we had a little bit of an emergency. Um, and uh, one of the pipes in the boiler room, a man uh, just gave out. Um, you know, this building, we're still trying to figure out exactly how old the building is. Uh, but it's probably close to 100 years old, if not. And a lot of the things that are inside the walls are that age, too. And uh, one of the, the, the drain pipes that goes out to the street from the storm line just gave out, began to leak uh, in the boiler room. And uh, you know what big of a problem that could be if you get water in the boiler and other areas. And needless to say, we had to take care of it right away so that the issue would not compound itself. And uh, the plumber came and uh, left us with a $3,400, amen, bill. Amen. The good thing is that we were able to do what we needed to do. But I'm coming to you all because for this week and next week, I need as many that would and many that can. I'm asking, in addition to your tithe, in addition to your offering, I want you to make a special sacrifice uh, toward the building fund for those of you that can um, because while we were able to take care of it uh, that that thirty four hundred dollars hurt amen and it makes a man makes it very difficult to move forward and to uh, progress in ministry if you're always playing catch up amen Amen. These lights are wonderful. Don't worry. We paid for these some months ago. We just got them put up. So our priorities are straight. Amen. The sound is wonderful and everything is coming into place, but it makes it very difficult to progress if we're always playing catch up. So I'm asking, I'm appealing. Uh, if you have an attitude, that's the devil. Because I'm asking. I'm not demanding. I'm just asking if you have it and if you have the ability to, amen, uh, we want to do our level best to, amen, cover the cost of what we had to put out. Uh, what many of you also didn't see, if you go into the parking lot, this week somebody hit our van. And so the front end of the van is damaged, and we're waiting on the insurance adjuster to come, amen, so we can figure out what that is going to be, amen. But right now, we don't have the use of our van, and uh, they say when it rains, it pours, but I, I don't get nervous about that anymore because... Amen. If I heard somebody say, if it's God's will, it's God's bill. <laughs> Amen. And my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. And so I'm appealing to those of you that can uh, for this week and next week. This week, amen, and next week is the first Sunday. Amen. Those of you that can make a special sacrifice towards our building fund. Amen. I know Mother May and Mother Lawrence and, and Mother Staley will greatly appreciate your assistance, amen, in the building fund, amen, helping us in those areas, amen, so that we can uh, restore what we had there, and I believe we'll be able to go a little bit over what we had in the name of the Lord, and uh, I'm not going to pressure you, I'm not going to push you, uh, you were such a blessing to me last week, whatever we don't get, I will make up the difference by the grace of the Lord, amen, because I don't want to trouble you, I don't want to but I do want to give someone an opportunity to be blessed. Amen? Amen. So taking those gifts into your hand, our tithe, our offering, amen, um, your building fund, whatever it is, I'm going to ask that you would rest on your feet. Um, and we want to give according to the scriptures, uh, not grudgingly or of necessity. Not grudgingly or of necessity before the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen. He loves a cheerful giver. And when you are a cheerful giver, Paul told that church, he said, then he'll make all grace abound towards you. And he'll see that you have sufficiency 
in all things. Can I see the hands of those in here that know all of your needs are met? Uh -huh. All your needs are met. Praise the Lord. Nobody in here looks like they've missed a meal. Y'all got quiet. Amen. Everybody look nice and healthy. Praise the Lord. Amen. Smiling faces. And so I thank you in advance. Amen. That's why I'm, that's why I'm raising an offering today. I don't want to put the pressure on the elders. Amen. If y'all going to throw tomatoes, throw them at me. Praise the Lord. Amen. But I've got to ask. And uh, I, I commit. I commit. I already had a conversation with the chairman. Amen. I commit that whatever we need to make up, amen, we will make it up by the grace of God. But I want to give you an opportunity to be a part of this. Amen. And, you know, I'm going to open this microphone up so you can hear the testimonies. There's some people in here that have been blessed, not just this year, this summer. New, new apartments and new jobs and blessed the new car a few weeks ago. Amen. Your pastor got a new job this week. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So I know you cannot be God's giving no matter how hard you try. Amen. The more you give, the more he will give unto you. Praise the Lord. And somebody said, well, you're still working for somebody. That's all right. I'm working where I want to work. I'm working where I want to work. Amen. And I'm doing it how I want to do it. And you know how the Lord will bless you? He'll bless you enough that he'll pay you to do what you love to do. And give you fringe on top of it, doing what you love to do. Pastor, what you getting ready to do? I'm getting ready to start teaching. Amen. Amen. So I don't have to, I don't have to be all over the city. I don't have to split myself between seven buildings. I don't have to manage people no more. I can deal with young people, but some of you adults, my heaven today. Amen. So God is good. And what he's done for me, I know I'm just playing catch up because he's already blessed many of you all. So we're taking those gifts. Amen. If you're giving electronically, you put it in your envelope, whatever method you want to give. And I'm appealing to those even that are watching this broadcast or that will watch the broadcast that they would join us. Praise the name of God and helping us. Amen. To secure what we need to do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I just watched, amen, one of my contemporaries in ministry raise over $80,000 in two weeks. I know it can be done. I know it can be done. Amen. And so we're just asking that you would allow the Lord to speak to your heart. Father, we thank you. We bless you today for your goodness and for your mercy. We ask right now, oh God, that you would do, as you said in your word, that you would supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. We thank you, Father, for all your manifold blessing toward us. And now, oh God, as we give, not grudgingly or of necessity, we give with cheerful hearts. We ask now, oh God, that you would meet the need of every house in this place, meet the need of every family in this place, whether they be financial, emotional, physical, familial, whatever it is now. We know, Father, that you can do anything but fail. I ask now, oh God, that you bless us all from the greatest to the least of us, oh God. Sanctify, multiply, add down to it. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Thank God. Amen and amen. God bless you. Face the walls. Come down under the directions of the ushers. Amen. We're going to prepare to receive our announcements after this. Amen. And we're going to go right into the word of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you, Lord, prepare me, come on, help me, to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary Lord for you 
This time everybody say, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. Sanctuary, Lord, for you. Let's thank God for Sister Michelle Jackson coming with our announcements in Jesus' name. Zoom at 7 p.m. Wednesday will be our corporate prayer at 6 a.m. We will also be fasting from 6 a.m. to 12 noon. Wednesday, we will have our noonday prayer held via Zoom. Saturday, we will have our community day. There will be a prayer station, face painting, bouncy house, haircuts and manicures, raffle giveaways, and free food. Yes, you heard right. Free food. Book bags and school supplies and more. Please save these dates. On Sunday, September 8th, we will have our, the youth department will present a back to school revival. More information to come. On September 19th and 20th will be our diocese, diocese annual revival. The Sunday School Department will be collecting money for the fall quarter Sunday School books. And, and mind you, this is the last Sunday for the books, for the book Monday, money, I'm sorry. The price is $7 for all books. If you would like to see a book, you can see Sister Bessie Hart, Mother Lulu Staley, or myself, Sister Michelle Jackson, with your payment for your book. Praise the Lord. The Women's Council Department is asking that all women please see Sister Kelly Dawes with your dues of $17. If you do not have all of the money, you can make partial payments. We are also asking our brothers to be boosters. Thank you for your support, the Women's Council Department. Please note that announcements are subject to change. Please be on the lookout for our church's text messages. You would like to be, if you would like to be added to the church, church's text thread, please see Sister Amanda Lawrence. We'd like to welcome all of our visitors this morning. If you are a first time visitor, we have a small gift to share with you. Thank you for everything. To my Refuge Church of Christ family, I want to thank you all for your love and support in making sure our pastor was loved and celebrated for his birthday celebration. You all made it a great success, and I could not have done it without you all. Thank you, and may God bless each one of you. Love, Sister Talisha Reed, Pastor's Aid President. Here are your announcements for the week of August 25th. May you govern yourselves accordingly. God bless you all. Amen. Let's go back there. Oh, everybody say, Lord, prepare me. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living Sanctuary, Lord, for you. Next time, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. This is our prayer for the word, pure and holy, tried and true. Thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you. But you want me to be, Lord, mold me. Do you want me to be? Lord, mold me. Do you want me to be? Lord, mold me. What you want me to be? Please shape me. What you want me to 
We bless you today for your goodness. We praise you again for your mercy. We thank you, God, for the open door this morning. We thank you for allowing us to gather one more time in your name. We ask, Father, if there be anything that's not like you in this room, Father, that you would take it out from amongst us, O oh God. That you would cover us under your blood, that we say yes to your will, yes to your way. We ask, Father, that you turn the search light on in our souls. Oh, God, and count us worthy. Oh, God, count us worthy to be used by you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, God, we ask now, oh God, that you illuminate our hearts, to you illuminate our minds to receive what you have to say to us this morning, Father. Send your word with power. Send your word with demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Prick somebody's heart to be changed this morning. Prick somebody's heart to ask, what must I do to be saved? Prick somebody's heart to want to identify with you through water baptism prick somebody's heart to want to change their life around in the name lord jesus christ we thank you and we praise you father remember those behind prison bars this morning remember those in hospital rooms this morning remember those shutting in their homes this morning oh god remind them that they'll never be shut out from your presence we ask that you send your ministering angels to the bedside of those that need you this morning speak a word speak a word we don't hear from you father we won't know what to do we thank you we praise you we count it as done everybody that need a word from the lord just clap your hands and give them one more praise in the house come on give the lord a praise clap your hands and open your mouth clap your hands and shout unto the lord the voice of triumph amen honor to all to whom honors do Amen. We thank God for our elders and our ministers and all of the, amen, the women of God, the men of God, the people of God. Amen. We say praise the Lord. Amen. With that you would grab your Bibles, amen, and turn with us to the book of Proverbs, chapter number three, very familiar area of scripture the Lord has been dealing with me concerning, amen, um, just a few verses in the name of the Lord. Again, I want to, amen, honor the Lord. Amen. For each and every one of you and your tremendous kindness that you have shown toward me. Amen. Over the last a few days. Amen. And uh, I don't take it for granted because, amen, I have some friends that didn't make it to this age. Some people that I grew up with, some of my closest friends, amen, died before they could live to see the age that I made it. And, amen, while it may be so young to some of y'all, Amen. It's an age that many have not seen. Amen. And I'm grateful to God, certainly, for what he's doing in the name of the Lord. I want to read, amen, uh, just the first ten verses, a little more than I normally would, but I want us uh, to get some context in the name of the Lord. And I'm going to do like my father in the gospel. Amen. We'll see what's what after verse ten. The uh, Lord may take us a little further in Jesus' name. Uh, when you get to Proverb chapter number three, beginning at verse number one, would that you would signify by saying, I have the word. Have the word. Here you'll find uh, these words recorded. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart 
keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor. Somebody say favor. favor. And good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy bonds be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Let me read 11 and 12 while we're here. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be wary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. So for the scripture, let all of God's people shout hallelujah. I want to talk about unlocking the favor of God. Unlocking the favor of God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Unlocking the favor of God. I want to read the English Standard Version. Just a few of these uh, verses. The English Standard Version says it like this. My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace will they add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Unfortunately, I believe that there are too few Christians that really position their lives to walk in the fullness of God's favor. We hear the word and it's something that we sometimes toss around lightly, but uh, they are not enough of us, let me say it like that, there are not enough of us that really understand how God wants to use his favor to position our lives uh, to be where he wants them to be. Yes, this is a suffering way. Yes, all that live godly must suffer persecution. Yes, we're going to have to go through but there's nothing like going through while the favor of God is on your life. Favor does not necessarily eliminate the trial and the tribulation that comes with life. Favor does not eliminate the fact that we've got to go through while we're in this life. But favor positions us while we're going through. Favor is God's tool for getting you to the places, the people, and the purposes that he has for your life. Let me say it again. Favor is God's tool for positioning you, getting you to the places, to the people, to the purposes that he has for your life. When you have the favor of God, God will put you around the right people that can do for you what you can't do for yourself. And many of us are doing a lot of things in our personal lives to get more money. Amen to the lights. 
We're working double and triple time. We are working overtime. We got three and four jobs to get more money. Because we neglect to understand that when we do the right things to get more favor, you can do more with favor than you can do with money. People with money still die by suicide. People with money still suffer with depression and anxiety. And many of us are chasing money instead of chasing the favor of God. Favor is sometimes synonymous, praise the name of God, uh, with grace. And we know that grace is unmerited. It is unearned. It is there for the asking and for the taking. You just got to be in position to walk in the grace and favor of our God. So it is God's tool for getting us to the places, to the people, and to the purposes that he has for us. You ever get ready, uh, getting ready to leave your house and then all of a sudden you get a case of the dropsies? <laughs> Got your bag on your back and you turn and knock everything off the table and then you turn back and knock the rest of the stuff off the table and you go pick that up and drop it and, and you get so frustrated because you can't get out. Not understanding that it's sometimes in those moments that God uses to position us to avoid an accident, to avoid an incident, to avoid a tragedy, or to have you on the right train call with a person you wouldn't have otherwise met. It's how God orchestrates our lives. And when we learn how to unlock his favor, he gets us in those right positions. Psalm 5 and verse 12 says, surely in the NIV, says, surely, Lord, you bless who? The righteous. And surround them with your favor as with a shield. The Bible says that God seeks out people who love him and not just love him, love his commandments. And those that love his commandments, he will bless them, he will guide them, and he will protect them. Some say that God's favor can be earned through righteousness, obedience, and faithfulness. And others say that wisdom is the key to finding favor with God. And you'll find that in Proverbs chapter number 8, verse number 32 through 36 says, Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they which keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my door. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. Solomon was talking about wisdom. That when you find the wisdom of God, not wisdom in our own eyes, not wisdom in our own understanding, but when you find the wisdom of the Lord, you find life. I'm hurrying. I know I'm, I'm taking off a little slow today, but I, I need us to understand in this this society that we're in now where we are so driven by our own understanding. Hear what King Solomon says. We cannot be driven by our own understanding, by our own pursuits, by our own desires. We've got to be driven to find the favor of God. The Bible describes favor as a free gift that can be displayed bestowed upon anyone who professes Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Ask everybody in your area, are you saved? Ask them, are you filled with the Holy Ghost? People get uncomfortable when I make them ask that in church. I know you attend. I know you like it, but are you filled with the Holy Ghost? Do you? Have you been born again? 
If they responded yes, and I should have pressed you a little longer, but we got to move. If they responded yes, you have access to God's favor. It is a blessing that comes from God that wants to provide people with influence and access according to his will for our lives. Favor of God can also provide divine intervention and exaltation and can act as a shield to protect and provide for God's people. Do you know you can still be favored and have an EBT card? Whether you got an American Express card or an EBT card, you can still have the favor of God on your life. As believers, we often hear about the importance of connecting with God's favor. But what does it mean exactly to unlock the favor of God for our life? Some of us are sitting here, standing here, listening to these words and automatically, amen, going on to the next thing that you have to do in your life. Because we're here out of obligation. We're here out of ritual. We're here because it's the day on the calendar that we're supposed to come. But if you come really to be imparted to, not by Rasan, but by the word of the Lord, God wants to position you to unlock his favor on your life. As we go into this final quarter of 2024, my Lord, we were just praying the new year in. We're going into the final quarter of what felt like a brand new year last week. The kids just got out of school. You were just going on over your vacation plans. And there's about a week left. Come here, Mother Alfred, and we'll be back in the saddle again. <laughs> she used to love to see us at the end of summer. We had all this fun and playing and stuff like that. And time to go back to school, she'd be laughing at all of us. Back in the saddle again. Just that quickly. And as I been saying to you as we've been making our way through this year we've got to stop and take inventory and ask the Lord have we done what you commanded for us to do at the start of this year I don't know about you but I made a vow to the Lord that I'm going to do my best to have no more wasted time And I don't know how many people want to, amen, uh, latch a hold to that. But let me just give you 10 seconds to just shout it to the Lord. No more wasted time. No more, no more wasted time. No more wasted time. We've got to walk in the favor of God for what we're trying to stow away and save money and come up with our strategy and our plans. If you can get in the favor of God, God will work it out on your behalf. God will put his super on your natural. That's why you got to give, you got to offer him something to work with. Sometimes we confuse grace and favor uh, with the, the freedom or the ability to just sit around and wait for God to do what he said he's going to do. But the favor of God comes to empower us. Just wake your neighbor up and tell him favor comes to empower us. It comes to empower us to be and to do what God has called us to be. Psalm number 90 and 17 says, may the favor of our Lord, the Lord our God rest on us, establish the work of our hands for us. Establish what he has called us to do through his favor. Favor of God empowers us to do more, not less. Favor of God is not a license to sit back and watch God do it all for us. The favor of God comes to empower us to be a part of God's plan. Many people misunderstand what it is and they misunderstand and they say that we're just supposed to sit on the sidelines and wait for God to work it out. But God wants to use your hands as a part of his plan. Get off the sidelines. 
Let God orchestrate your life through favor. Favor cannot be earned. I'm hurrying, I promise. If favor cannot be earned, how then do we position ourselves to unlock its potential in our lives? I'm glad you asked. Number one, you need to make sure that you are in proper position. Let me say it again. You need to make sure that you are in proper position. What is proper position? Where God wants you to be. You can have a great six-figure job in a C-suite with a view of the Hudson River, praise the name of God, making, amen, multiple six figures, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's where God wants you to be. So number one, you got to make sure that you're in position. And Overseer Cottle, amen, gave us a powerful word last week talking to us about David in Jesse's house. And the key to David in Jesse's house is that David was in proper position. Remember, Jesse passes all of his sons before the prophet. He passes all of his sons before Samuel. And the oil does not flow for any of the people that looked apart. And Samuel says, I know the Lord told me that the king is here. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to sit down until I see the oil flow. Is there another? They said, oh, David. You don't want David. He said, well, where do you find them? They knew exactly where to find David because David was in position. If you want the favor of God to be unlocked in your life, you've got to make sure that you're in position. Who's another good example in the scriptures? Mary. Mary was in proper position, espoused to be married to Joseph, yet she remained pure and untouched. And the Bible says in Luke chapter number one that the angel of the Lord comes and appears to her in the sixth month and tells her greetings, O favored one. The angel told Mary, the Lord is with you. Luke chapter 1 verse 29 says, but she was greatly troubled, talking about Mary, at the saying, trying to discern what this was all about, trying to discern the sort of greeting this may, may be. And the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus and he will be great and he will be called the son of the most high and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. What does that have to do with anything that we're talking about? Mary was in proper position. Mary remained a clean and pure vessel that the presence of the Lord could impregnate her. Untouched and untainted by a man. Y'all ain't hear what I'm trying to say to you. Unaffected by her outside atmosphere and what was going on around her, she stayed in proper position to receive the literal favor of the Lord on the inside of her. If you want to unlock the favor of God, you must be in proper position. What we read today, Proverbs chapter number three, look at what, amen, Solomon says, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments. Keep it on the tables of your heart. Don't just, amen, sit in the house of God on Sunday morning and then leave out to relive the rest of your week without what I told you. He says, if you'll do this the length of days and you'll have a long life and you'll have peace will be added to you if you would just simplify it and listen. Some of us don't have the favor of God in operation in our life because we refuse to listen. We refuse to listen. 
We won't listen to the auxiliary leader. Who does she think she is? Who does he think I am? Praise the name of God. We won't listen to the pastor. Who does he? He's not bishop. We wouldn't. Y'all didn't listen to bishop either. But he says, keep my commandments in your heart if you want to live long. And not just if you want to live long, if you want to have a life of peace. One thing I learned from my pastor, even though the late Bishop R.C. Lawson has been gone for decades, he is still honoring the word of what his pastor told him even now. You get an opportunity to have a conversation with apostle and let apostle start talking about his pastor. He'll light up right away. Keep my commandments. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck and write them on the tablet of your heart. Don't let it leave you at any time. Look at somebody and say, stay in position. Stay in position. Stay in position. Stay in position. If you want to unlock the favor of God, I'm doing, I'm doing all right on time. If you want to unlock, amen, the favor of God, number two, you've got to stay in position. You've got to remain faithful in the face of options. Notice what I said. Not opportunity. Not opposition. You've got to stay faithful in the face of options. Make sure y'all hear what I'm saying. You got to stay faithful in the face of options. You're not really faithful if you don't have options. Children's church is not downstairs yet, so I can say what I want to say. Praise the name of God. Some of us are abstinent, not by choice. You abstinent by lack of opportunity. But you got to position yourself to be faithful in the face of options. I'm talking about unlocking the favor of God. You got to be faithful to what God assigned you to do, even when you don't want to be. You got other options with the other places you could be. When Walmart got a sale, when Target got a sale, when you don't feel like coming, when you, when you want to be laid out on a beach because it's the summertime, you got to remain faithful to the call of God. The vow that you take to serve in the house of God, the vow that you take, amen, to fulfill the ministry that God has called for your life. Not ministry with a microphone, I mean ministry for your life, what he's called you to do. The vow that you take is not to the pastor. You don't take a vow to the apostle. The writer said, I made a vow to the Lord. Paul writes to Titus, Titus chapter number two. He says in verse 11, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. And look at somebody and tell them we all have access to it. We, we all have access to it. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Teaching us. Uh, teaching us that we should deny ungodliness and deny worldly lust, praise the name of God, and remain faithful, amen, to live soberly, righteously, godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works he said these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority let no man despise thee we ought to ask the Lord, amen, to challenge us to be the type of child of God that when someone calls you with bad news or someone calls you and getting ready to make a bad mistake, praise the name of God, that we have enough holy boldness to be honest with them and tell them, I don't think that's what the scripture says. I don't 
think that's what God wants you to do. Now, we can't run each other's life. We can't be in control of whatever everybody else does. But we certainly can be our brother and sister's keeper. Look at what it says. I'm, I'm hurrying. I know I'm giving you a lot of scripture this morning. Praise the name of God. Look at what it says. Amen. In Revelation chapter number three, you know, this is where uh, the Lord tells John to write these letters to the seven churches, speaking about their condition. Praise the name of God. In Revelation chapter three, verse number seven, he says to the angel of the Lord in Philadelphia, right? These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that is open and no, he that open and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man open. Look at what he tells Philadelphia. Philadelphia, I know thy works. Behold, I've set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength. You've been weary and well doing. You have a little strength. He told Philadelphia, You have but a little strength, but you have kept my word and has not denied my name. Behold, I will make them the, the, the synagogue of Satan which say that thou are Jews and are not but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Talking about the favor of God. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them and dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast. Let no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. He told this church, if you just hold on in the face of what everybody else is doing, you got a crown in store for you. You, 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 you can walk in the favor of God if you can just maintain I know it's not always easy. He told Philadelphia, you got a little bit of strength left, but with the little bit of strength you have left, you made a decision. I'm going to hold on and see what the end is going to be. That's why it is so important that we don't allow the devil to separate us from one another. That's why it's so important that we don't allow the devil to separate us from the house of God because we come into this place to receive the strength of God to live the life that God has called us to live outside of these four walls. When we allow the devil to separate us and isolate us, amen, we run the risk of running short on the strength that we need to be who God has called us to be. How many of you know God has a calling on your life? He told them, you've got to remain faithful in the face of options. He said, I, I set before you an open door. Many times when the Lord will open a door for you, if you look further down the hallway or behind you, you may see some other open doors too. But every open door is not a door from God. Sometimes when we're making a decision, we only run the financial numbers. If I take this job, I know I have to work these extra hours, and I, but I'll get this much more money. But we don't seek the face of God. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves. Humble themselves means that you don't have all the answers. It's acknowledging that I don't know which way to go all the time. If they will humble themselves and pray, seek my face. Learn, turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. I forgive their sins and I'll heal, heal their land. You, you've got to, praise the name of God, be in position. And then you've got to remain faithful in that position. Praise the name of God in the face of options. And look at what Psalm 37 says. We know and fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. But look at what verse 3 says. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. The 
Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. I know sometimes we think that the favor of God is connected to us, but the favor of God has very little to do with you and everything to do with the God that you serve. That's why the writer said, trust in him. And do good. Tell somebody you ain't talked to yet this morning. Tell them, do the right thing. Do. Just do the right thing. Trust in the Lord and do the right thing. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily you shall be fed. In other words, if you do what God told you to do, God will take care of you. If you take care of God's business, God will take care of your business. I was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. The final thing you need to do as I hasten along, the final thing that you need to do uh, after you have made your soul, you're in the right position. After you've made a decision to be faithful, praise the name of God. The final thing that you need to do is trust him with everything. Would you just help me teach the lesson and talk to a neighbor for the last time? Tell them trust him with everything. Uh, Solomon said trust in the Lord with all of your heart. That means even the doubting parts of your heart that means even the size that can't see the way forward that means even the size that don't understand the plan of God you don't have the full strategy you don't have the full outlook you you don't have all of the information all you have is a word can I talk to somebody in this house this morning that will admit all I have is a word God didn't give me the details yet God didn't give me the road map yet but I know what God told me I know in whom I believe uh, trust in the Lord with all thy heart trust him with the parts of you that have trouble trusting him trust him with the parts of you that still sometimes doubt him ask the Lord to condition your heart ask the Lord to condition your spirit to trust him even when you can't trace him praise the name of our God and sometimes you just gotta jump out and see what happens trust in the Lord Oh, thine heart and do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him uh, he said in some of your ways uh, I'm just checking he said in most of your ways in your family ways in the way you grew up in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your path uh, if you acknowledge him with everything that you Lord I'm getting ready to start this job oh but I realize you're the one that gave me the job Lord I'm getting ready to go shopping and I thank God because this time last year I didn't have the money to do this Lord I thank you these groceries are expensive but Lord I thank you for the money you gave me to buy these groceries Lord the rent is getting higher and higher but Lord I acknowledge you're the one that's keeping a roof over my head Lord praise the name of God these kids aren't listening the way I want them to listen but Lord you're the one that blessed me with these children you created them in all of your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your path be not wise in your own eyes fear the Lord and turn away from evil and if you do that it'll be healing to your flesh hallelujah oh praise the name of God if you learn how to lean and depend on God it will be health to your navel and marrow to your bones if you want to learn how to live a long and successful life in God learn how to do what God told you to do I know that's not deep enough for some of you I know praise the name of God oh that's not the amen the deep riches of God's word but God said just do what I told you to do and if you would trust and obey you realize there's no other way to be happy in Jesus you've got to learn to trust and obey
day. Trust God with your health. Trust God with your money. Trust God with your household. Trust God with your decisions. You want to unlock the favor of God. When you do it God's way and the road get a little hard, you can look up to the Father and tell him, Lord, you told me to do this. Lord, you told me to go this way. Lord, you told me to say it this way. And I make a declaration in this house. God, if it's your will, it's your bill. You can do what I can't do. You can do the impossible. You can make me walk in rooms and turn the heart of the king in my direction. You can make me walk in the lone officer and turn the heart of the lone officer in my direction. You can make me sit down at this interview and turn the heart of the boss in your direction. Yeah! Yeah! Trust God with everything. Trust God with your life. Trust God. Yeah! And how do I know that the favor of God is on my life? Psalm 41 said, David said, by this I know that you favored me not because of my bank account, not because of my job status, not because of my marital status. By this I know that you favored me because my enemy has not triumphed over me. How do you know if the favor of God is on your life? No matter what, the devil try, he can try, but he'll fail every time. Cause the favor of God is on my life. Whatever I put my hands to, God will make it prosper. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly not sitting in the seat of the scum. Yeah, his delight is in the law of the Lord and in it does he meditate day and night and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. His leaf shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I came to release another level of favor on your life. Whatsoever you do in the name of the Lord, you will not fail. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I came with the word from the Lord. Try it. So what is unfamiliar? If the Lord said it, try it. So what? If it makes you uncomfortable. If the Lord said it, try it. So what? If you're of a certain age and you've been out of school, that's God tugging at your heart. Try it. Try it, try it, try it, try it. Find a neighbor for the last time and shake their hand, bump their fist, bump your elbow, and tell them, neighbor, I release a Mikey anointing. Ask them, who's a Mikey? They said, ask Mikey. He likes it. 
Mikey will try it and Mikey will like it. God said, try it. You might like it. Try to do everything that God said. Stop being so fearful. Stop being so timid. I want everything that God has for me. Because what is for me, it is for me. Shout yeah, yeah, yeah. I want the fame of God. I want the fame of God and operation in my life. After all you've been through, the devil couldn't stop you. After all the ups and the downs, after all the tests, after all the trials, after all the trials and the error, after all the mistakes, what he tried didn't work. Cause God said, my hand of favor is upon you. Yeah, for the Lord, God is a son and a shield. The Lord will give grace. Yeah. Try it again. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk up rightly. That's not sucking and jiving. That's not straddling the fence. That's not playing one day and playing another day. No good thing will he will hold from them that walk up rightly. I heard the word of the Lord say, tell the righteous, it shall be well with them. Tell, 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 tell the righteous, it shall be well. It shall be well. Strength to your bone. Strength to your bone. Strength to your bone. The favor, the favor of God be with you. Receive it now. in the Lord with all thine heart with everything you got with everything you got you got to get fully invested in God you can't just pick him up and put him down you can't just be in sometimes and out other times you can't just trust them when things are working your way and then when life get hard you go back to your own way God does not operate like that God does not desire for us to operate like that he says trust him with all your heart lean not to your own 
understanding. That's the temptation. Especially when difficult times come. The temptation is to lean back on what we understand. The temptation is to lean back on what makes you comfortable. If your job has ever had you do any of those personality analysis, you know, you're in this quadrant, you're this, you're an amiable, you're a driver, you all they'll tell you that no matter what your personality is, you have the ability to flex based on your environment. So if you're the person that usually takes control in some rooms, you may be the person that falls back and lets somebody else take control. But what they say is when stressors come, you will always fall back to who you really are. And that's why the scriptures tell us that we must be born again. Born of the water, born of the spirit, so that we can work on who we really are. So the Holy Ghost can come and change our DNA from the inside out. Change our thought process and our thought patterns and even change our appetites. You know, you can pray an appetite away. I love to hear Mother Lawrence tell her story of salvation and sanctification. And she wanted the Lord to do something for her, to take a certain appetite away from her. And she trusted God to complete the work that he began in her life. And the Lord changed her appetite. And God can fix it so much until something that you once enjoyed will become repulsive to you. If you really let the Holy Ghost do a work in your life, something that you used to love to be a part of, all of a sudden he makes it very difficult to understand why would anybody want to do this? Why would anybody want to wake up with a hangover? Oh, you never had, okay. No, all right. Me either, mommy. I never had that. Why would anybody want to put their body through that? God can change your appetite. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He will direct that path. I didn't get to this. Y'all keep standing, I promise I'm not going to try to preach it. But he said, be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. It'll be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance. With the first fruits of all thine increase. I knew I wasn't going to get too many amens there. The Bible tells us that where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. And sometimes it's those areas that are difficult to let go of are the areas that point to where our trust really is in God. You can always explain away doing the right thing. What the Bible really meant was, what God was really trying to say was, that was for then, that's not for now. There are some principles in the scripture that remain true. He says, honor the Lord with, is it about money? No, it's not about money. It's about where your heart is. It's about where your heart is. And the tithe is so challenging to us because it's about where our heart is, our money. Giving, sacrifices, it's so challenging to us because we work hard for our money. We worked a long time to be able to retire and get this check that we get now. I worked one job, two jobs, part-time jobs, side hustle to get the little bit that I have to do what I want to do. And if we're not careful, the scriptures tell us not money, the love of money is the root. So he tells us, here's a test of how much you trust me. 
These are not unrelated. He tells us, here's a test of how much you trust me. Not by how much you jump and shout and scream. Not even by your church attendance. Not by how well you preach or sing. He says, honor me. With everything I bless you with, honor me with it. Yes, money, but there are other things that the Lord has blessed you with that he wants you to honor him with what he gave you. That skill, that gift, that anointing. That intelligence he's given you, that ability to create business plans and to make ways out of no way, he wants you to honor him with that too. He says, give it to me. We have such a hard time and we let the devil play mind tricks over giving God a dollar out of every ten. He's so much God that he says, Lee, you can have nine. You can do whatever you want to do with the nine. Just give me a dollar. Show me where your faith is. Just give me a dollar. A penny out of every dollar. A dollar out of every ten. Ten out of every hundred. A hundred out of every thousand. A thousand out of every ten thousand. I can keep going. Because I said, Lord, get me ready. I need to do the quick math. hundred thousand out of every million. And some of us, the Lord would bless us to get a million. Lord, I waited a lifetime to become a millionaire. How can I give you a hundred thousand? It's going to get my account down. That way some of us think. I just wanted to see the million in the bank account. It's not about the money. It's about where our heart is. He says, but when you do it, your bonds will be filled with plenty. Imagine that. Giving with your heart in the right place will lead to you having more. That's the kind of God that we serve that he can do addition by your subtraction. Your bonds will be filled with plenty and your wine presses shall burst out with new wine. Somebody just say, I trust you, Lord. Come on, say it again. Say, I trust you, Lord. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. Unlocking the favor of God in your life is really just as simple as learning to trust God with everything. God sees that he can trust you to trust him. He'll trust you with even more. Some of us in this house, if we'll be honest, that's the, that's the point that we are struggling with. We trust God, but we're, we're, we're like that man whose son needed something from Jesus. Lord, I believe, but, but, but help down my, my unbelief. There's some parts I still struggle with. We can be honest. We, we're all family. There's some parts I still struggle with. There's some parts that I'm still holding on to. I trust you, but mm, in this area here, mm, but if you want the favor of God to be an operation in your life, you got to trust him with everything. You got to trust him with everything. Trust him with your health. Even when you get a diagnosis that may not be what you want it to be, you trust God with your health. 
The word of the Lord says he was wounded for my transgressions. Bruised for my iniquity. Chastisement. My peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed. The Old Testament said by his stripes we are healed. The New Testament says by his stripes we were healed. Either way, it's already done. <laughs> Not because pastor said it, because the word of the Lord said it. We've got to trust him even in those difficult moments to release the favor of God in your life. God can snatch a disease out of your body or God can snatch the disease out of the disease and leave it in there. <laughs> Some of you are living with conditions right now and you're not even affected by it. Hi Hallelujah. 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 I don't know where you are, who you are. But if I'm talking to you this morning and you want the favor of God to be released in your life, just slip your hands up to him wherever you are. First thing you need to do is make sure that your soul is in the right place. You can never operate in the fullness of God's favor. You may have good fortune, but you can never operate in the fullness of the favor of God except he dwell on the inside of you. You repent. You turn from your wicked ways. You turn from ways that don't please God. And really, when we do things that don't please God, it really amounts to how much we trust him to do it his way. If you really break it down, it's really about how much we trust God to delay our gratification for a later time. Repent says, Lord, I'm sorry for everything I've done that doesn't please you. And I'm making a commitment now to turn in the opposite direction. Hallelujah. Then you must be baptized, an outward expression of that inward confession. You go down in the watery grave to rise, to walk in the newness of life, and you're on your way to receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, the evidence of speaking with other tongues of the Spirit of God. Give the utterance. And if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, our challenge now then in these moments is to release whatever hindrance, whatever roadblock, whatever obstacle is in our way that's preventing the favor of God from operating in our life. This may not be for everybody, but for those that will be honest and to just slip your hands up to the Father, begin to speak to him right now. Ask him to remove every hindrance, every obstacle. Lord, help me to be in proper position with you. Help me to remain faithful to you. Help me to remain faithful to your word. Help me to remain faithful to your house, to your work. Help me, Father, to trust you with everything. Come on. While your hands are lifted, just begin to worship him. Speak to him. Ask him to do whatever you need him to do. This is, this is the moment right here to unlock the favor of God on your life. Come on. Only you are holy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm not going to tell you how to speak to him, but it should be something that's audible. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Come on. Lord, release your favor. Lord, release your favor on our life. Release your favor on our decisions. Order our steps for the steps of a good man. The steps of a good woman are ordered by the Lord. Lord, orchestrate our lives in such a way that we come into the places that you would have us to be. We come into contact with the people you would have us to come in contact with. We come into possession of all that you have in store for us. Come on, come on, come on, come on Lord. Talk to him, talk to him. Hallelujah. Come on, talk to the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, only you are holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Only you are holy. Come on, y'all. Come on. Lift it up. 
Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. and agree with you. Come now. Come quickly. Lord, release another level of favor in my life. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
is training. Mother is showing us with every step that she takes. Lord, I ask right now, you can complete the work. Strengthen her feet. Strengthen her knees. Hey, God, anything that's not like you, I bind it now. In the name of Jesus, a fresh anointing, new strength, holy boldness. In Jesus' name, hallelujah.
never true. you to accomplish what God set your hand to do before the end of the year. I want to let somebody know it's not too late. God has not forgotten about you. God has not forgotten his word concerning you. God still has time to work. God still has time to work. God still has time to work. As a matter of fact, God is not even caught up in time. He ain't even studying your clock. He ain't studying your calendar. The favor of God is eternal. We're getting ready to let you go. I want everybody to just make this confession. And if your spirit catches it, you feel like praising God, we can go into a praise. If you want to leave it where it's at, we'll leave it where it's at. But I need everybody in this house to make this confession and then release some kind of response if you believe it. I need you to open your mouth and say, my situation, come on, shout it, my situation is getting ready to catch up to his word. Say it again, my situation is getting ready to catch up to God's word. Last time, my situation is getting ready to catch up to God's word. Now, if you believe it, do something about it. Hey, go.
getting ready to see what God said. You're getting ready to see what God said. That's what the favor of God will do. situation is getting ready to catch up to God's word. Be seated in the house of the Lord. My situation is getting ready to catch up. Favor ain't fair. But God chooses and he operates with whoever he decides to operate with, however he decides to show his hand. And all I know is I want to be in the place of favor. What about you? Hallelujah. We're going to get ready to let you go. Thank God for everybody that is here. Amen. Thank God for the move of the Holy Ghost this morning. Hallelujah. And uh, I know the Lord did something special on this altar. Amen. And uh, amen. The Lord has done something special for a few people, but you got to know it for yourself. You got to know it for yourself. And uh, even in, in a culture where Amen. You know, people are speaking up for you. It's in the dark moments of your life. You got to know that you know that you know that you know for yourself that you've been saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. And I know that's why all in the scripture, when someone receives the Holy Ghost, it is accompanied by initial evidence. Speaking with tongues is not the only evidence, right? You ought to produce fruit from your walk with the Lord, but everywhere where you see the infilling of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament, it is accompanied by tongues, because that is the initial evidence. And so you got to know for yourself that's how you walk in the favor of the Lord. Hallelujah. If anyone has a seed, we'll receive it now. We're getting ready to let you go. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is still working and he's still moving and so I'm going to ask you to get it as orderly as you can and just bring it up. Matter of fact, Nadik, if you could just move it to the other side for me. Amen. Amen. Uh, and if you have a seat, just come from wherever you are and we get ready to go in the name of the Lord. Thank you for your special sacrifice again. Amen. I'm appealing amen, to everybody that will. If you haven't been able to do it this week or if you can do it this week and next week, Amen. We'll receive a special offering, amen, uh, for our building fund, amen, to help us with this $3,400 bill. Amen. That's close to $5,000 in the month, amen, that we have had to, amen, put into things that you cannot see. It would be great to spend $5,000 on new walls and ceiling and all the stuff that you can see and enjoy. Amen. But we're just in a season right now where we've had to spend money on things you cannot see. Amen. But trust and believe the work is going on. Amen. Amen. And we thank God. Uh, I have so many friends in ministry that are looking for a house of worship. 
they're just looking for a place that they can rent out for their ministry. The Lord has blessed us with space, amen, more than we utilize on a regular basis. And uh, the other day I walked outside in the parking lot and, amen, the parking lot was jam, 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 jam packed, amen, and the sanctuary is not even full. Amen. So when the Lord filled this sanctuary, I don't know what we're going to do. Amen. But the Lord will provide. Amen. Amen. And, and I'm speaking like I know it's going to happen. Amen. I know it's going to happen. Amen. You don't have to be preaching nonsense. Amen. To fill the house. Amen. The Lord said, if I be lifted up in the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Amen. And I believe that we're in an hour now. The world is getting so bad. People will respond to the truth. We just got to bring them here. Amen. We got to get them here to hear the truth. Praise the name of God. And so I'm soliciting your help. Amen. To help us to fill the house in the name of the Lord. Amen. Next Saturday, we need everybody's hands. Amen. For our community outreach day. Amen. And we really try to do our best to get you these dates in enough advance that you can participate. You know, some people get the dates and still, you know, amen, but we do our level best to try to get you the dates in advance so that you can participate. And if you can't stay for the entire time, amen, just, amen, try your best to donate a portion of the time that we will be out there. We certainly need help with the setup and the breakdown. Amen. But, you know, uh, nobody wants to go to a restaurant that nobody else is eating at. Okay, how much you tell me how good the food is. If I get there and ain't no cars in the parking lot, ain't nobody sitting in there. It makes me wonder how good the food really is. And so, amen, it, your presence is help. Your presence is help. Your presence is a sign of life for this ministry. And so I'm asking everybody, amen, on Saturday, make a sacrifice. We would love to have you there all day, amen. But if you're not able to be there all day, amen, just, amen, uh, try your best to donate some time, amen, to help us to get the word out, amen, that Jesus still saves and he has some people here that love him in the name of the Lord. And so... We're soliciting your help all day. There'll be free food, has already been stated. Activities for our children. Amen. We wanted to, uh, the team wanted to do uh, the little girl's hair, but there's just so many, you know, uh, things you have to be leery of, of doing little girl's hair that we need to be sensitive to. Amen. So they're going to be doing little manicures for the girls going back to school. Don't worry, they'll be holy manicured. Yeah, so some of y'all got nerve putting putting that paint on their nails. <laughs> and then we gotta go home. All right, let me tell you one of the first things my father said when my daughter was born is, "Y'all are gonna be putting that red lipstick on her face, are you? <laughs> putting that polish on her nails." Amen. I know it's gonna be sanctified manicures. Praise the Lord. A little sticker, a little flower, a little something. Amen. We're going to see to it that our young ladies are ready for school as well. Amen. Amen. And so our barber has, again, consented to donate her time. She will be giving free haircuts to all school-age children. Amen. And so uh, if you have some young people in your family, and you know, haircuts are expensive now. Amen. It ain't 5 and $10 anymore. Amen. And she is donating a Saturday to come cut hair. The busiest day of the week for a barber. She is donating a Saturday, amen, to be here. And uh, this will be the second year in a row where she hasn't charged us anything. And so, amen, uh, we want to make, we don't want to waste her time. If you have some young people in your family that you know can use a haircut to get ready for school next week, bring them with you on Saturday. And I believe... Uh, if Bishop was here, he would say we'll have a glorious time in the Lord. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for everything. I think we're gonna, we can go on that note in Jesus' name. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. So let's all stand in Jesus' name. Amen. Always remember 
Jesus. Always keep him on your mind. And ask minister, come and give us final remarks and a benediction in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. Beautiful word. I, I just want to say that um, I'm so glad that I was in the service today. It felt like it was a unusual service, like a, a fresh wind, a fresh anointing. I believe God did, Pastor said that, but I believe God did something in here today. I believe it was a miracle, and I can't wait to hear the testimony of it. It's, it was it, it's an unusual, and I'm thankful to be here with uplifted hands. God, we thank you, oh God, for your presence on today, oh God. We thank you that you visited us, oh God. We believe that it was a sign, a miracle, a wonder, oh God. You did something special, oh God. Hallelujah, your anointing that destroyed the yoke was here today, oh God. And we thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, we will carry this word with us on this week, oh God. We have favor, oh God, hallelujah. We have favor, Jesus, oh God. Help us to continue, oh God, to be in position, oh God. Hallelujah, help us to remain faithful, oh God. God, hallelujah, because faithful was he that called us, oh God, and help us to trust you in the name of Jesus, oh God, for you never failed to shed, oh God, hallelujah, keep us and we shall be kept, oh God, bless us and we shall be blessed, oh God, in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Greet your brothers and sisters with a holy hug in Jesus' name.